All right, in this video, we're going to talk about a rating of perceived exertion. And if you've taken any kind of wellness class or exercise science class, you've probably heard of a rating of perceived exertion. And it's pretty much what it says it is. It's a rating scale or some sort of range of your perception of how hard you're working. So let's, uh, let me draw this out here where it says RPE. That way I don't have to keep writing it out. So rating of perceived exertion. It's a scale on how hard do you think you're working. Let me kind of draw it out down here. So it's a scale that ranges from 20 to 10. And it has a high correlation with heart rate. So if you didn't have a heart rate monitor, this would be a good common sense test of how hard you're working. So you could, if you can master it and get good at it, you can uh, kind of give yourself an estimate of how hard you're working. It's not exact, but there is a high correlation. I've used it before in my classes and uh, it, it's fairly close so it doesn't take very long to get good at it but if you've been doing aerobic training for most of your life it's going to be easier there's a higher correlation than somebody that hasn't been doing aerobic training it's just they don't understand how they should be feeling at certain heart rates but if you have a good handle on that then it's real easy to say okay I should be at let's say a heart rate of 160 or I'm at a 16 so all you really had to do is just put a zero on the end of these and, and you can see how that matches heart rates in, in certain training zones. So for me, I run a lot and I normally keep my heart rate about 160. So I know kind of how I should be feeling. And so if I, if I rated myself a 16, I can be pretty confident it's going to be I, I'm at a heart rate of 160. Or if I rated myself at a 15, I know I'm pretty confident that I'm at a heart rate of around 150. So I know how I should be feeling. Now, as it drops down, uh, I don't do as well. So it's, it's harder for me to, to get an estimate. I know that if I'm just sitting around on my bottom, it's going to be below a 10. So my heart rate is going to be way below that. But for me, it's tougher to tell when I'm at 120 or 110. That's normally at a good walking speed or actually a really slow jog for me. But up here, I know I'm going about seven miles an hour because I do that all the time on the treadmill and I know um, how I should be feeling. I'm probably going to have a heart rate of around 150. So anyway, this is a good common sense test. So if you didn't have a heart rate, you could get some sort of estimate of what your heart rate actually is and tell what training zone you're in. So if you watched the last video we talked about heart rates and setting training zones and so if I rated myself a 20 it's an all-out effort like I'm working as hard as I can I'm going a hundred percent so that one's a real easy one to rate yourself on it's a little trickier as you drop down but like I said before, I'm, I'm pretty good at training around 160 to 150 for my heart rate, so it would be easy for me to, to give myself a good estimate. But I have experience doing aerobic training, so I know I can't go much harder than that. So when I'm running at a 7.5 mile per hour pace to 8 mile an hour pace, my heart rate is normally... Um, around 160. I'm a little older, so um, that's that's a. Uh, I'm not going to be able to train much harder than that. But you notice here, this scale actually goes down. So if I got around in my age range, which would be right around in here, I'm actually training much higher. But I've been doing aerobic training for much of my life, so this is probably a truer estimate of what. Um, my upper limit should be because this is this scale is really built for the average person so I've been training most of my life so 160 is probably close to my 80 percent because my true max heart rate is probably much higher but if you remember back to the last video if you're just an 
an individual that hasn't trained most of their life, you would take, let's go back over here real quick so that you can see this. So 220 minus your age would equal your estimated max heart rate. So for a 20 year old person, 220 minus your age would be around 200. So you're 80%, you take 200 times 0 0.80 for a 20 year old person, and that would be 160. But since I've been training most of my life, my estimated max is probably pretty close to that. Because a lot of times when I do sprints and I check my heart rate, um, I'm getting up to like 195. You know, sometimes every once in a while I'll see like 198. So I know my estimated max is probably still pretty close to that. And the reason that's happened is because I've trained most of my life. So let's, let's just look at this real quick and I'll talk about this on future videos. Let's say that's age 25, here's age 60. So this is your estimated, estimated max heart rates. And this is over time, of course, because you're aging here. So these are your heart rates here. Let's say 200. So actually let's do 225. And let's do, or 220, I should say, 180, 160, 140. So as you train, you get closer to 60, your estimated max, or your true max, will go down with age. But if you continue to train most of your life, you can really slow that decline quite a bit. So I know some individuals kind of peak out with their aerobic training at age 30, 35. That's when their lactate threshold tends to be the highest and, and their VO2 max tends to be fairly close. VO2 max does the same thing. As you age, it slow, slowly declines and we'll talk about that in future videos. So I hope this helped explain rating of perceived exertion how it's tied into heart rates and estimated max heart rates so that way you can link the two together and I hope you kind of understand this principle of if you continue to train especially do aerobic training throughout your life you can slow the rate of decline so you can keep your level of fitness much higher than it ever could be if you didn't train at all. So this is a much steeper decline here because it's somebody that doesn't train. So it's a natural losses you would get over time, whereas this person continues to train, so they slow that decline. So I hope this helps link all those areas and that you understand what rating of perceived exertion is and how it's used. So I'll see you in the next video.